from bed yeah there's a bed at the gpmb you you can use you can use a mat and make it as a bed as long as you are comfortably sleep tell us, us exactly and you have some sponges too i john cb mendy do swear that do swear that and speak the truth i'll speak the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the and truth. nothing but the truth so help me god so help me god Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Uh, we have met already. My name is Esa Fao, and uh, I'll be leading you through your evidence before this commission. Do you understand? Uh, thank you. And now let's start with your biographical information. What are your full names, please? My name is John Charles B. Mendy. What is your date of birth? Um, 1st May 1972. Where were, where were you born? Tujereng. I was born in Tujereng, village Combo South. Where did you do your primary school education? Tujereng Primary School, later to Bakote Primary School. Cool. Can you tell us which years you attended Tujereng Primary? I attended Tujereng Primary School very late, starting from 1991 to, well, starting from 1981 to 85. And then you attended secondary school, didn't you? I do. Where? St. Teresa's Secondary Technical School. Which years? From 19... 86 to 1990-91. What did you do upon completion of secondary school? I didn't do anything. I went straight to the army. And uh, you enlisted in the army, if I understand you, correct? Yes. Uh, which intake did you belong to? 15 intake. Uh, on the 27th January, 1991. Uh, who was the commander, the platoon commander? Upon completion of my training, I was posted to Bravo Company in which uh, Captain Johnson was the company commander. Um, did you remain in uh, Bravo Company until 1994, or did you have reason to move to some other unit within the Army? No, I didn't remain until 1994, because I was moved in 1993 to AHQ camp. Uh, uh, we are not conversant with some of these military uh, acronyms, so could you tell us uh, what that means? Uh, it stands as Army Headquarters Camp. Uh, in which unit of the Army Headquarters Camp? I was uh, moved to the Finance Department. And you worked in the Finance Department until Ju July 22nd, 1994, correct? Yes, sir. Do you recall that day, Ten July 22nd, 1994? Uh, soldiers turned against the regime that was there, that is uh, Al-Haji Sadawda's regime, to overthrow him. Did you hear any, anything about a plan to overthrow the then government of Sadawda Yara? Before 94, before uh, July 22nd, 1994? Yes. No. Uh, Mr. Witness, uh, we have your witness statement, and uh, do you recall giving a statement at all? I do. Uh, do you have a copy of that statement with you? Yes, I have a copy. I would also send you the signed copy that we have. We would want you to verify that that's the signed copy of the statement that you gave. 
Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd imagine that uh, the copy you have with you is the same as this one that we have. Correct? Yes. Um, the question I asked you was whether you had any idea uh, that uh, there was a plan to overthrow the government and then you indicated no. Um, is, is that the position? You asked me July 22nd. Yes, 1994. That's why I said no. But, you know, uh, the coup d'etat starts on 21st. No, the question is whether you heard or learned about a plan on to, the to, to overthrow the government. On the 20, does on the, on not the, matter whether it was going to on be the on the 21st I or the 22nd. Don't speak over me. Okay. I would also avoid speaking over you. Uh, otherwise, it would look like a quarrel, no, which sorry. is not happening, and we wouldn't hear each other. The interpreters wouldn't also, they wouldn't hear what we are saying. The interpretation would be difficult. Okay. So let's learn that discipline of allowing one another to speak. Okay? Good. Um, the question is, did you learn about a plan to overthrow the Jawara government sometime in July 1994? And please put aside this statement. If you need to read from the statement or to look at it, I would, le I would let you do that. All right? Okay. Can you now answer the question? I didn't. I knew about it on the 21st. And what did you learn about it on the 21st? That some soldiers were disarmed at the airport. And they were trying to make, to take over the country. Do you know who initiated that plan to overthrow the government? It is after the takeover. The question is, do you know? The question is not, when did you know? The question is, do you know whether there was a plan, or do you know who initiated the plan to, to overthrow the government? I didn't know whether there was a plan prior to that, but I know who initiated it after the takeover. When I, that was the time that I was told. Yes, Mr. Mendy. Uh, let's try not to make it difficult. Uh, the question is, did you at any point in time come to know who initiated the idea to overthrow the government? Yes. Kindly tell us. I came to know who initiated the plan, uh, and the individual is Sana Sabali and Edward Singate. Can you tell us how you came to know that information? Yes, it, it was a chat between me and Sana after the takeover. So it was only subsequently that you, that Sana Sabali told you that he initiated the coup d'etat. That's what you're telling us. Yes. Uh, in your statement, let me refer you to paragraph three. Paragraph? Three of your statement, and I would read it uh, out and confirm to me whether what is contained there is true. You, here you say, the idea about a takeover was initiated by Sana Sabali and Edward Singate, who took it upon themselves to invite other members, Sadi Buhaydara, Kababajo, Yankubature, and Yaya Jame. Is that correct? No, Kababajo is not there. Uh, of course, Kababajo was subsequently invited. Uh, but, okay, we delete Kababajo from this statement. And it would read, the idea about a takeover 
was initiated by Sana Sabali and Edward Singate, who took it upon themselves to invite other members, Sadibu Haidara, Yankuba uh, uh, Ture, and Yaya Jame. Is that it? Yes. So in here, what is missing is how you got the information and at what stage, right? Yes. And it is your testimony that you are given this information by Sana Sabali subsequently, correct? Yes. Do you recall when he gave you that information? No, I can't recall. Okay. Uh, you are telling us about the 21st of July, 1994. Can you tell us what happened that day, as far as you can recall? I was on duty at uh, the Army headquarters when I had that Some soldiers were disarmed at the airport. That was on the 21st. That's all you have to say about the events of that day? Yeah, because I was not there, please. I was not at the airport. What we are trying to get is all the information you received about the events of that day. That's all you had? Yes, that's all I had. And uh, did you hear anything else about what was to happen the next day? No. Kindly tell us. What I you said heard. no, I didn't hear what was supposed to happen the next day. Okay, again, I'll take you to your statement. Yes. Paragraph 4. You said, following the incident at the airport July 21st, 1994, and after a tip off that some soldiers were planning to overthrow the president. Jawara's government, all those present at the airport were disarmed, and there was news that those behind the move were to be arrested the next day. Did you say that to the investigators? Yeah. Yes. Do you say that here as your testimony? Do you accept that as your testimony? Yes. Okay, and uh, you went on to say that those behind the move were to be arrested the next day. So out of fear of being arrested, Sana, Sabal, Sana and Edward rushed to Yundum Barracks in the very early hours of Friday morning, July 22nd, and arrested the adjutant, Sirif Gomez. Did you say that to the investigators? Yes. So you knew that something else happened after the disarming of the soldiers at the airport, correct? Yes, I knew about it. That was on the 21st. Uh, exactly, and this is what I am trying to drive at. I want to help you to narrate your story. Uh, if you don't answer the questions, we would find a way to get it out of you. So it would help and it would be faster if you just answer the questions. If you don't understand the question, ask me to repeat or to explain it, and I will explain it, all right? Okay. Good. Uh, so um, tell us about the events that happened subsequent to the arrest of Sirif Gomez. When a move was taken from the airport and uh, they were disarmed. They let them go. At night, they regrouped, they regrouped themselves. Who is they that Singa you are referring to? Singate and, uh, uh, and uh, Sabali. They regrouped, regrouped themselves, come to the barracks. Early hours of the morning, 
when adjutant, adjutant used to come very early in, uh, to, to work, when he come, unknowing, unknowingly to him that these people are in the barracks, when he come, Singate come out and halted him and then arrested him. According to what I was told, because I was not there at that time. At what stage did you come to learn that a coup was in the making? Uh, 21st, July 21st. On the morning of January, of July 22nd, how did you come, or at what stage did you come to learn that the coup that was already foiled on July 21st is still ongoing? I was at uh, Banjul when I learned that the, steel, the coup is still going on. And I had to leave my office in Banjul, go home, dressed, and join them. Dressed in what? In uniform. When you are in Banjul... I was not in uniform. Just allow... Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, we have to get that discipline. Uh, you are a soldier, that's really be difficult. Okay. So, why did you do that? Why did you leave your place of work, go back home to change in military uniform? I just feel to join my colleagues. You wanted to participate? Yeah, in the I wanted data. to participate, to be quite candid. Good. And uh, when you changed into military uniform, where did you go? I go straight to Yundum Barracks. And do you recall what time you arrived at Yundum Barracks? I cannot recall the time that I arrived there, but I think it's around after 1, 11, 12, 1. I cannot recall the time. In the afternoon? Yeah, around in the afternoon. Between morning and the afternoon. Around 11 to 1. Around 11 to 1. At the time you arrived at the barracks, who did you find there? I find a uh, few soldiers. And uh, already by then, uh, the adjutant was already been arrested, has been arrested. And I didn't meet Sana there. I didn't meet Singate there. They've already moved out from Yundu Barracks to go to Fajara Barracks. And what did you do upon learning that the coup leaders were not at the barracks? I just, at that time, anybody who comes to the barracks, he will just get his, his wife be, with him. That is his, the, his what? Wife, that is weapon. Oh, you call it wife? Yes, it's your personal wife. Okay, I hope you treat, you treat your wife nicely. Sure. Good. So you retrieved your wife, and then what happened? You just move out. If you, you go out, if you see any vehicle, you just jump on it, and then you follow them. So tell us what you, di what you did upon taking your weapon. I just jump on a vehicle, move straight, going to Banjul with, uh, I think some some soldiers up to Stink Corner, I think around Stink Corner. Where did you find this vehicle that you jumped into? Just an ordinary vehicle. We just stop them and then you know jump on them. You commandeered it. Yeah, we'll give them, tell them that to either drive us. Some, when they see us, they just jump out of the vehicle. By then, I cannot drive, so I was not able to drive. And how, who drove the vehicle then? No, by that, the vehicle that we, we, we jumped in was driven by the owner. 
and uh, you forced him to take you wherever you wanted to go to at sure. the time. Were you alone? No, I was not alone. And I cannot recall the people that, the soldiers that I was with. So you went up to Sting Corner. What happened there? It's where I met, I, 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 I found uh, Yaya Jame and some soldiers with him going towards the Denton Bridge. Were they on foot or were they in yes, a vehicle? They were moving. The time I met them, they were moving on foot. Did you jump out of the vehicle? I did. And uh, the driver turned back. So you joined the group? We joined the group. Who was the leader of the group at the time? Yaya Jame at that time. Did you see uh, Mr. Edward Singate at the time, Lieutenant Edward Singate at the time? No. How about uh, Sana Sabali? No. Uh, how, do you recall how many soldiers were with Yaya Jame at the time? No, but there are a little bit many. Ten? Approximately seven upwards. Seven upwards. upwards. Zero seven upwards. Upwards, yeah. To thirty? To, to maybe about fifteen or so. But I cannot call. I cannot recall the number. So was it about a section, or was it a platoon? No, it could be a section. Right? It's not a platoon. And how many soldiers would constitute a platoon? Mm, there, there, there are many. There are many. How many soldiers will constitute a platoon? I cannot recall now. I cannot recall now. Fifteen? I say I cannot recall. <laughs> I cannot recall. <laughs> I am trying to jog your memory here. Yeah, I cannot recall. Uh, you know, I, all right, no problem. So you don't know whether it was a platoon or a section, but there were more than seven. More than seven upwards. But less than fifteen. It could be, but it's more than seven upwards. Because I didn't count them, I don't have time to count them. And I didn't put my attention to the number of people that we are moving with. So, you joined them at Sting Corner. What did you do we after moved, that? Sorry. We moved to, towards Banjul. Yes, and... Uh, what, upon, upon arrival at uh, Denton Bridge, we met Armeyago, uh, Suare, who blocked the Denton Bridge. So, Major Suare had a good relationship with Yajame. They knew each other in Zandam and all those things. They went together, they, they take a distance, they were talking. Talking, talking, talking for so long, about 30 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes. And then, to my own understanding, Suare was overcome by Ayajame. And then he let us go. Can you explain how Suare was overcome by Ayajame? Because he refused us entry, and then he blocked Denton Bridge. So during their conversation, conversation, and then the, the bridge was open. Automatically, I know maybe Yajame had convinced him, and then he, we were allowed to go to to move. So what they were discussing and what, what he told him, I don't know. At this stage, how many soldiers were in your group? This is what I'm saying. I cannot count them. I, I cannot recall counting them, and I don't know how many of them. But there were many, a little bit. Did the numbers increase compared to the group you joined at Sting Corner? No, as we move, the number increases because they've already uh, get control of Fajara Barracks, and they were moving towards Banjul. As we move, the number increases. So ultimately... Suare 
open the bridge and you are able to pass through. Yes. And, and uh, where did you go after crossing the bridge? We will go straight to Banjul until when we reach at uh, mile two. We were informed that some prisoners were trying to for trying for them to be released to join us. But uh, Yaya told them, no, you cannot be released. It's where at, Denton, uh, at uh, mile two prison is where I met uh, Sise, the former director of NSS and uh, some senior officers of the prison department is where I, I met them and some of them their weapon were confiscated by Yaya Jame and then he hand them on to me I was handling them up to Bajul. How about the officers from whom those weapons were seized? They what were, happened to them? They were in between me and between us and the Ayajame. The Ayajame is in front. They, 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 they are in the middle and then we are behind them. Were they tied at all? Eh? Were their hands tied at all? No. Were they free to go away? They were not free to move away from where we are, but they are free to walk. They were walking freely. They were captives, right? Yes, they were walking freely, but they were not. So the question hands, is whether they were captives, not whether they were walking freely. No, they, 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 of course they were captives. They, they are termed as uh, prisoners of war. They were captives, I would yes. say. Uh, there was no war situation. <laughs> yes, so there, they but could it's not have how been. the soldiers always pretend themselves as okay. No, so of you war. walked with them to 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 Banjul, correct? Yes. And ultimately, you arrived at State House. You have to expedite this. No, uh, from the mile two prisons, we walk up to Bond Road. We had we had a gun shot. We had gone sort one or two times. Was that friendly fire or was it enemy fire? It was not a friendly fire. So what was it? It was an enemy fire. Do you know who fired that shot or did you later come to learn who fired that shot? I later learned to that the, um, somebody gave that order for them to fire at us. Who was it that, that gave the order? That Chongan was the one who gave that order. What's the name again? Chongan, Chongan. Okay. Uh, uh, who was Chongan? Um, Chongan was uh, in the Zandarmerie. During the amal amalgamation, he was moved to police headquarters. Do you know what position he held at police headquarters? He was a senior officer, though. At the police at all, but I was didn't know. anybody injured from those gunshots? No. And uh, how did the, those gunshots impact the group that was led by uh, Jami? The moment we had one or two shots, everybody scattered, and then you know, we take positions, and then we started moving in bounds. Can you explain what that means, moving in Moving in bounds is moving um, like few people will move and then the others will... Well, it was a tactical take, maneuver, Yeah, tact tactical maneuver. One group would move and another group will cover. Cover and watch, yeah. Right. On both sides until we reach uh, this place. Um, Act 22. Uh, were there any more gunshots? No, there were not. 
Okay, you arrived at uh, Gambe High School Junction? Yes. And then what happened from there onwards? Then we moved to State House. We moved Following to state which direction? The hospital di the directions and the, uh, the main highway. And others are on the seaside, on the beach side. Independence Drive and Marina Parade. And Marina Parade and the beach side. And the beach side. Okay. Um, which group were you with? I was with uh, Yaya Jame. And uh, did you make any stop along the way? Uh, the stop that we are making is just only tactical, military tactical stop. Do you know Minister of Justice? To know Minister of Justice. Do you know the Ministry of Justice premises? Yes. Did you stop anywhere around that area? I cannot recall stopping. Do you know whether along the way uh, Jami had cause to talk to anybody on the phone? At that time, telephone were not that much available. I don't know whether he has telephone or not. I, I didn't suggest a mobile phone. I just said telephone. Do you know whether he no, had No, I don't, I don't. All right. Um, your group obviously went through Marina Parade, right? Yes. And uh, tell us what happened when you arrived at the gates of State House. Uh, before we arrived at the gate, we were told that uh, the president had already left. Who told you that? Um, the soldiers that we met at the gate. Do you recall any name or no, names? I don't know them because we, I was not conversant with uh, state guard personnel. What happened after you were told that the president had already left state house? Um, that he has gone with, I think, uh, the, I don't know whether the American embassy or the Senegal embassy towards uh, the port's authority. And what happened after that? Uh, what, what happened after that, uh, we entered inside, make a re -oc. We've gathered together until everybody comes in. Who, do you recall who opened the gate no. for your group to get in? No, I can't recall. I can't recall. Okay. So you went in? Yes. All the other groups arrived? Joined, yes. What happened after that? What happened after that? Uh, the senior guys sit together. They were discussing. All of us, the juniors, were trying to guide the state house, trying to look each corner whether it is safe or it's not safe. For how long did you remain at state house during this period? Which period? Uh, the, the period of that day or what? Yes. Um, for me, I could recall I only spent there nothing more than four hours. So you went home that day, that same day? I went home that same day. And uh, as at this time, do you know whether a government had been formed or not? So I heard. Tell us what you heard. I heard that they formed a government. And uh, before forming a government, there was a push and pull. Between who? Between Yaya Jame, Sana Sabali, Peter, uh, Edward Singate, Sadi Buhaydara. And what was the push and pull about? Who is going to be the leader? Do you know how it was resolved? Yeah, it was result, resolved. Um, they take everything into military. Military. They said, we are still military officers, and we have to work according to what military says. It's seniority. That is how they resolve things. 
And who became the leader, as far as you can recall? Um, because when when they at, the, at first what they told me they said they uh, they, they they choose Yaya Jame to become the, the the leader, and Yaya said no because he was not the one who suggested uh, the takeover that Sana Sabali should, should be the 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 chairman. And Sana say no. You are the most senior. You should be the chairman. That was the push and pull. When they selected Sana Saba, uh, uh, Yajame, then who is going to be the vice chairman? That was where the problem comes from. Singate wanted to be the vice chairman. But because Sana Sabali seniored him, He's supposed to be the vice chairman. That was, that was where the push and pull comes in. Of course, you told us that you weren't present. This is something that you heard from other soldiers, correct? Indicate by a yes or no. The transcript would not recognize any nodding. What, what do you say? Indicate no, no, your answer no, repeat, by... No, repeat what you ask me. Okay. Uh, the question is, of course, you are not present... This is information that you had from other people, correct? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, did you return to State House at any time after this July 22nd? No, I didn't. When was the first time you returned to State House after this event? It was when I was discovered that I am at GPMB. G G G GPMB. I don't understand. Could you say that again? I said um, the time that I recall returning back to the state house, it was when I was asked to become the vice chairman's oddly. But between the time you were asked to be vice chairman's oddly and July 22nd, where were you working between those two dates? At that time, most of the soldiers don't have permanent posts. You just get up, you move somewhere else. You just get up and move somewhere else. But then, you know, I was living in Banjulding at that time. But most of the time, I'm always at Banjulding Police Station. From when I, when I left Banjulding Police Station, after two, three days, I went to Banjul. I was at uh, the GPMB all along. What uh, were you doing at GPMB? That was where I was. That is where you were posted? No, I was, no, nobody, at that time nobody tells you that you are posted here. What were you doing at GPMB? I was just there as a guard because my office was just next to GPMB. So, so you were one of those deployed to guard GPMB, correct? No. You were not deployed to guard GPMB? No, I was not deployed. What, how did you happen to go there? I used to go and then have nights sleep there. Why? Yes. <laughs> That's, anyway, that, that is how I used to be at that place. You I would just, just, I I would, I would just be at the army headquarters when the time when I'm not on duty. When the time comes, I'll just go and sleep there. I feel it was more comfortable than even the, the army headquarters at, at that time. You have air condition all over. So I feel it's more conducive for me to go and sleep there. I, I just want to understand um, what was happening at the time. You work at army headquarters and close of business you go to sleep at GPMB. Is that what you're telling us? I, I do sometimes, but not all the time. Was there a house at GPMB where you could sleep? No, in? offices. There are offices, comfortable offices to sleep. How did you have access to those offices? Those, the offices were open. The, nobody had control over anything down there. 
So you just walk into somebody's office. You just walk into an office that is not locked. Turn the air conditioner and just and sleep. Okay, uh, but where were you walking officially at this time? Officially, when when I left uh, Army headquarters, I used to go there. But officially, I don't have a permanent workplace at that time. So each morning, where would you report for work? There was no reporting at, at that time. So you just go anywhere you want? There was no reporting at that time, to be quite candid. Okay. At what stage did you decide to start reporting somewhere for work? It was when I was caught by the Army commander at GPMB to become the vice president then oddly what were they doing at gpmb they they came for a visit i don't know whether he got a tip of that i am there or not but when he come i just get up from bed stand on top from bed yeah there's a bed at the gpmb you you can use you can use a mat and make it as a bed as long as you are comfortably sleep tell us, tell us exactly there is no bed but you know the reason why i said get up from bed is where i slept that's why i said get up and bed. what was that there are mats and you have some sponges too okay so, so you woke up and what happened? i woke up I just looked down, I saw Sana's convoy enter. I tried to maneuver, he has already seen me on top, because I was on top there. He has already seen me. He said, aha, uh -huh. I have been looking for you for so long. Come down, come down. I just walked down, washed my face, walked down. Then, uh, Baji was the army commander then. Which badge? Momodu badge. Uh, Sankara? Sankara? Sank Sank Momodu badge. Do, do you know what he does at the moment? What work he does at the moment? Yeah, I think he's the military advisor or so, or something like that. To of who? the president. To the current president? Yeah. yeah. All right. And Mom then Momodu what happened? Badge. When I come down, he, Sana, Sana told him that I need this, I need JCB as my, uh, my oddly. I said no. To who did you say that? To, to Sana. I said no, but I, am, I have to go and inform my boss. I just tell him that I have to go and inform my boss. He said no. Did you tell him no, or did you tell him no, I have to go and inform I my boss? No, I said, I, to, I told him no, I have to go and inform my boss. And what did my he say My immediate boss. That? He said no. The army commander said no. JCB, I am the army commander, and from now, immediately, you are his oddly. I was just trying to dodge away from that responsibility, but it is the army, when I say no, I may be charged. But you already did say no. Yes, I just say no, <laughs> but I don't have powers more to pass that. So I had to accept. And then from there, then Babukar was his, Babukar Njai was his uh, bodyguard. Okay. How many days after the takeover did this event take place? Did we, it's almost about maybe after one week or, or so. One week or seven, eight days or so. Do you know why you were chosen to be his oddly? I didn't know, but the only thing that I may say the reason why I am chosen is uh, to go by my records. Because I was a hard-working soldier, obedient, neat personnel. I am a neat somebody. I like dressed, you know, neatly going to work. And I don't go to work late and you are tough also huh tough 
No, no, I was not that much tough. No, I was not that much tough. By that time, I was slim. Unfit. No, I was not that even fit. How, how would you make it in the army if you were not fit? You can make it in the army when you are, you know, sometimes you, 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 you are not that much physically fit, but you are strong. Okay. And you want to tell, I don't want to ask you about the difference. Uh, so, so, so let's move on. You were selected to be his orderly, and you were there with who? I was the, I, I am there with uh, Babu Karnjai. Which Babu Karnjai? Babu Karnjai, the, it's the same Babu Karnjai. You only have one Babu Karnjai. We have Babu Karnjai and ba Baba Njai. Okay. And Babu Karnjai, is he known by any other name? No. He is known as the but I now understand that he's called, they call him Jai Ponkal. But he, we call him Jai Dichep. Jai what? Dichep. Dichep. Chep. Chep Katla. Chep Katla. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> no sir, Lada. Yeah, that is his nickname that we know him of. I'm just hearing this Jai Ponkal within here. Okay. Uh, do you know why he is described as Jai Ponkal? Yeah, maybe because he's the size, his size, you know, he used to lift heavy weight. Maybe he's because big? of his size. That's why he's called Njai Ponkal. How do you compare to him in size? No, in size, before he is more heftier than me and more stronger than me. Good. And who else? Baba Njai. Is he known by any other name? B.A. B. A. J. Right. Yes. Who else? Zakaria Sise. Who else? Uh, Albert Gomez, the late. Uh huh. Yes. And then you go to the drivers Dembo Jiba, mm -hmm. Alkali Jalo, mm -hmm. Lamin Drame. Lamin Drame. So what, what were your responsibilities? By the way, before that, Zakaria, what was his last name? Sis, Zakaria Dabo. Earlier on you said Sise, so no, which then, is correct. You know, my, one, my boss was Zakaria Sise, so my mind went straight to him. I know maybe you know him. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you referring to Zakaria Dabo or Zakaria Sise? I'm referring to Zakaria Dabo. Good. So, um, what, were the respons what were your responsibilities as uh, members of SANA's security detail? Uh, our responsibility is to safeguard, safeguard him as the vice president of the country. Vice chairman. Vice chairman of the country. And what else? That is our responsibility. Uh, how about with regards to his convoy? It's all about safeguarding his life. How about his convoy? This is what I'm saying. His convoy is all involved about, you know, what do you mean by how about his convoy? What responsibilities did you have with regards to his convoy when he travels? It's to safeguard his life. Besides that responsibility, what other responsibilities did you have? Uh, is to safeguard his life. We well, don't have any responsibility beside that. Okay, uh, we will find a way. Uh, was it your responsibility to clear the way so that the convoy wouldn't be obstructed? Yes. And uh, with regards to ensuring that the convoy was not obstructed, did you receive any instructions from Sana as to what to do to ensure that the road was clear for his convoy? Yeah, the instruction given to, to, to Ross is uh, make sure we enforce what was lacking in the Gambia. That's number one. Number two, anybody who obstructs us and refuses to get 
off from the road whilst sirens is on we get him off from the way by what means by all means including shooting at the person not shooting at the person but we can boost the tire of the individual's vehicle where where what what about when the person is not in a vehicle the person is not in a vehicle no no that mandate i have never ever received that mandate okay uh, you were asked to clear the road by all means correct including by firing at vehicles to to immobilize them right to 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 stop their their their, their movement okay we sh we would accept that and uh, did you did you and your colleagues do that as instructed personally me i i i did i did one can you tell us about it yes we were going to the uh, to the airport to receive a guest in which we found out that the the, the flight is already on the ground we were rushing whilst moving with our sirens on to sweep the way from Bova zone uh, we met uh, we, we we follow one car that we were t forcing him to get out from the road but he refuses I don't know whether he refused or he didn't refuse or whether he had it or he didn't hear it but he didn't get away from the road from Bova zone until around Cow Junction is where we managed to sweep him off from the road we've get down personally I am among the people who get down rush on him and is a person that I happen to to know I yield on them my other colleagues they stopped I went to him I tell him that what you are what, what are you doing like this huh? I went and then boost his vehicle tire and then we move to the airport trying to defuse the tension. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Witness, uh, I would give you the warning. We have given it to you earlier, and on several interviews, we have warned you that it is a criminal offense to lie before the commission of inquiry, and that it is also a criminal offense to give a false statement to the commission. I'll just repeat that to you so that there is no misunderstanding as to whether you've been adequately warned or not. Do you understand me? 100% I understood. Okay, good. Uh, this incident that you're referring to, do you know who, who is the person affected, the victim? I know. What is his name? His name is John Jai. The Was John Jai beaten at all during this incident? I am not aware or remember him being beaten Mr. Witness you are the first to get to the witness that's what you told the commission correct you are the first to get to John Jai I, in the car that's I, what I, you told us I told you when the when the convoy stopped all the bodyguards disembarked from the vehicle rose onto him I shout on, shouted, uh, sat on them. I went to him and told him that John Jai, what you are doing is not good. Leave the way for the sirens. And I bust his tire. You shot I his shot, tire. I shot on his tire. Yes. Yeah. Uh, was John Jai beaten at all? I am not aware of him beating. But how could you not be aware? You were there, standing there. Uh, if John Jai was beaten, you certainly would have known. If he is beaten, and I know that he is beaten, I will tell you that he is beaten, my, my so, lord. So answer the question. Was he beaten or was he not beaten? I said I am not aware of him being beaten. So 
do I take that to mean that he was not beaten at all? F fine. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's your choice. Yes, was I'm okay with that. Was he beaten or was he not beaten? I said I am not aware of him being beaten. So we take it that he was not beaten. That is your answer. Fine. No. Is that your answer? My answer is I haven't seen him being beaten. Thank you. Uh, we, we would move on. Uh, then how about... Was that the only incident you witnessed, that of John Jai? No. Can you tell us which other incident this, you witnessed? Um, the second one I could call is the last one that I can recall. It, it may happen that there are some that I cannot recall, but the ones that I'm recalling is what I am saying now is uh, the one at Abuko. The one at Abuko, I think, is on Thursday, on a Thursday. On a Thursday, 26, 27, I think, I think it's on, on 25th, on a Thursday. Of 25th of which? January. Which, of which year? 1995. Yes, and what happened on that day? From Brikama, um, uh, we went to Sana's naming ceremony. We were coming up to Abuko, where they sell rams. Uh, I, I was inside Sana's vehicle. There was a sweeper in front. All of a sudden, I saw some funny movement. I saw a car that make a U-turn and then come and then pass us. And then the sweeper turned and then followed the, the, the car. When they followed the car, we turned we turn to. Uh, when you say we turned to, who are you referring to? I refer the, guard, the person that I am guarding, that is Sana, and the, the driver. So you were in the same vehicle with Sana Sabali and his driver. And his driver. And Sana Sabali being the, uh, uh, the uh, vice chairman. Yes. The deputy chairman of the AFP yes. at the time. Yes. Okay. So, so you we, and Sana turned and joined the chase, correct? Yes. Okay. We joined the chase until at Lamen, I think around King's Club. I cannot remember which junction, but it's around that end. It's where... I met, we met them, I met them, the escort, the, the sweeper, already apprehended this gentleman. But by the time we reached there, me personally, I know he was roughly handled. What do you mean by roughly handled? Like a, a, a gentleman, I could, I could know, I know that, that that individual was a gentleman, but the way I found him, was not favorable. Uh, can you cut through the chase, call a spade a spade, tell us what happened to him? No, because I met him already, they've, they, 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 they've apprehended him, get him into the, the car, but T-shirts and all those things I, it was rough. Uh, Mr. Witness, was he beaten? I cannot tell you that he was beaten because I met them already, uh, uh, in, sorry. I, I cannot tell you that he was beaten because I didn't make them beating him. But I know the way I saw his shirt and all those things, it was rough. And he was not like that. I know he was not like that from home. So did you see him when he left his house? I didn't. But I know that that, that, type, of, that type of dress and that type of shirt, a, a gentleman will not dress like that. Did you participate in beating him, the gentleman? No. Uh, we have a report here. Yes. Uh, it's from the NIA, okay. and it is a report uh, of the investigations into incidents involving Sana Sabali and others. Yeah. And the report said that Mr. Tekanyi, Ablai Tekanyi, I will, I will just read it out so you would hear about it. Incidents of assault by Sana Sabali. Uh, this is, by the way, some of the materials we have received from the NIA. 
uh, we 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 bringing the original it would be showed to you in order to gain time i will read out what is contained here it says one Ablai tekanyi had been assaulted by by captain sabali and his escorts at lamin you are one of his escorts i imagine correct uh, yes uh, the tires were shot at and he was seriously beaten up allegedly for failing to give way to the vice chairman on the highway. Mr. Tekanyi was charged for the offense of dangerous driving contrary to section 47 and 49 of the Motor Traffic Act, CAP 70.03, volume 7 of the laws of the Gambia 1990. He was convicted and sentenced to a fine of $1,000 by the Carnifying Magistrates Court. This is the incident you are referring to, isn't it? Yes. And the report said Mr. Tekanyi was seriously beaten. You deny that? I'm not aware of him being beaten. Uh, Mr. Witness, are you saying this? To shield yourself from responsibility, considering that Mr. Tekanyi was assaulted. Why will I conceal that? You may want to answer that question. This is what I'm telling you. I am, I am not concealing it because I am telling you that I am not aware of him being beaten. So this report because is false. I, huh? This report that I am reading from, saying that Mr. Tekanyi was beaten by Mr. Sanasabali and his escorts, which includes you, you are suggesting that this report is false. For me... I didn't beat him and I didn't see him being beaten. It could be he was beaten uh, bef prior before I, b my arrival. It, it could be. So you deny that Mr. Tekanyi was seriously beaten? I didn't. I said before my arrival he was already apprehended. It could be he was beaten before my, my, my arrival. I didn't say he is not, be he, he is not beaten there. But I am saying by before I, I reached, he was already apprehended and I saw, saw that he was roughly handled. Is what I said. Okay, no problem, Mr. Witness. Uh, put it any which way you want. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is uh, that Mr. Tekanyi was seriously beaten and here you are trying to dodge the fact that Mr. Tekanyi was beaten. Uh, first, John Jai, you said you do not know that whether he was beaten or not, even though you are the first to arrive on the scene. Now, Mr. Tekanyi, you don't know whether he was beaten. That is where we are at the moment, correct? Yes. Good. Uh, let's, let us proceed. Uh, tell us about the woman at Latir Kunda Mampatokoto who was selling boiled potatoes along the road. I'm just hearing that today. Uh, Miss uh, Dola Ba was shot for allegedly, allegedly obstructing the convoy of Sana Sabali. What do you say to that? I am just hearing that today. Uh, how about Farsise at Mandinari? I am just hearing that today. How about the incident at Old Joswang, where you are alleged to have shot at the tire of the, of the person driving the vehicle. What do you say to that? It could be possible, I, but I cannot remember. Uh, how about the Nyambai Forest incident, in which you were also alleged, together with a BNJ, to have shot at the tire of the driver? What do you say to that? Nyambai Forest. Nyambai Forest. I cannot remember. How about yes. So you cannot remember any of these incidents. You cannot remember anybody beaten during these incidents. That is your testimony. Yes. Good. Just remember that other witnesses would be called. And if it turns out that you are lying, We have explained the law to you, correct? Thank you. Uh, wonderful. Uh, now let's talk about uh, uh, an incident at Serekunda Police Station where you were sent by Sanasabali 
to go and pick somebody and bring the person to his house. Do you remember? Yes, I do. Can you tell us about the event? Um, we went to work and then close by nine upwards. We were called by Sana Sabali and said, there is somebody at uh, Serakunda police station who, who was um, using boots, telephone boot by then, calling the president and then insulting him. We went upon arrival at Serkunda police station. We explained ourselves, and they saw us, the gentleman. He was at, uh, I think, at the cell or over the counter. W one of them that I cannot recall, I cannot remember. We collected him, take him to Sana. Upon arrival, we hand him over to Sana. Sana asked him some few questions. Why do you have to be calling the president and insulting him or so and like over the telephone and all of that? The man didn't respond. So he gave us an order to punish him, and in which we did. We gave him a military punishment. What was that? Military punishment is squat, you force individual to squat, to press up, <coughs> do frog jump, crawl, and beating. Beating. Essentially, you tortured the man. Even by crawling is, is a way of torturing in the military. And you participated in yes, that? Yes, I did. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we, we would move on to uh, an, another topic. Um, we have dealt with um, the shooting of Dolaba at Latir Kunda Mampotokoto. You cannot recall conveniently. Abdullah Tekanyi, you are present. You don't know whether he was beaten, even though he looked visibly manhandled. Farsise at Mandinari, you cannot recall that. Uh, the New Joswang incident in which you were alleged to have shot at the tire of the driver, you said maybe, maybe not, you cannot recall. Uh, the incident at Nyambai Forest. You cannot recall, this is the state of affairs, but you remember torturing the, uh, the person who was removed from Serekunda police station and taken to Sana Sabali's house. You agree to that? Um, I agree to that. Good. Thank you. Now let's uh, move on to uh, other issues. Uh, the security detainees who are in mile two prison. Do you know anything about those people? No. Did you ever have occasion to be deployed to mile two to guard anybody? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, it was just after, I think about two or three days after the takeover and uh, some senior officers were arrested, detained at mile two. I was there for um, almost, I think, about two days with them, guarding them. Did you come to know who they were? I know some of them. Who did you know? Pasala <laughs> Jang. Pasala uh, Jain, call it PS, Chongan, uh, 
Uh, um, I think the present army commander. What's his name? Cham. No, I think Cham. 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 Uh, Some of them, there, but I cannot recall all of them. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, before I proceed further on that, earlier on you talked about your responsibilities as members of the security detail of the vice chairman, and you told us that uh, your responsibility was to ensure his security. Do you recall that? Yes, but the, the, this time I was not yet with Sana Sabali. I understand. You were saying this is just three days after the coup d'etat. You joined Sana Sabali after five days. Uh, yes, upwards. Yes. Uh, so would your responsibilities also include, as, as a member of the security detail, of course, would your responsibilities include having to follow him around wherever he went? By the time I am selected to move with him. Yes, sir. Yes, if I am on duty. Yes, and uh, normally, how many of you would be with him in the security detail? It depends on to the move at that time. If he is leaving State House and going somewhere, how many people would be with him? It depends on the people that are within, on duty at that time. Sometimes you have about... Uh, I think uh, three, three, three at the, the sweeper sometimes doesn't have too much of men, about two or three, two or three, and then the rear maybe have about two or so, or three at the rear, two at the sweeper, it depends on two. Uh, but most often wherever he went, he would go with his orderlies. Yes, and, and, the, and, the, and the security personnel. And how many orderlies did he have? Three. Could you name them, please? Myself, Babukar Njai. Which of the Njais? Babukar Njai? Uh, we, we have Babukar Njai and Baba Njai. Okay. All right. Babukar Njai is Njai Fonkal, yes. according to you. Yes, Babukar Njai. Yes. And uh, uh, Zakaria. Zakaria who? Zakaria Sise. Zakaria Dabo. Yes, thank, Zakaria, you. thank you very much. <laughs> Zakaria Dabo. Um, did you have occasion to ever visit Mile 2 prison with Sana Sabali? Daytime or nighttime? Nighttime. No, I, no, I cannot recall going in with at Mile 2 at nighttime. Uh, do you recall ever being in mile two with Sana Sabali, wherein security detainees, not political detainees, security detainees were taken out and tortured? No. So you deny being present in mile two prison on 5th or 6th September 1994 when Chungan, Mama Cham, and RSM Jeng were tortured by Sabali, members of the council, and their orderlies? No, I deny that. Uh, I deny that. Mama Cham knows me personally. If I am there, he knows that I am there. So your testimony is you are never there on that occasion? On that occasion. But were you there on another occasion, not necessarily at night, when political detainees were, were beaten? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, I was with uh, the council's members when uh, OJ, I think Baji, Kama Baji, or the others and other political detainees were forced to give some information. And, uh, Where did this event 
that, that place that where was, was it? that was in mile two uh, that was in mile two around the 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 remand wing around the remand wing can that you, empty can, space can you explain the setup in which this thing happened they 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 were called outside there They were called outside there, and uh, can you tell us about the setting, the arrangements at the time? No, they they all they, they all stood up, lined up, in in our front. Uh, and the council members were they standing or were they sitting? They were standing. Were any chairs provided? I cannot recall because at that 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 time that 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 space. It was under the sun. Okay, what, tell us what happened there. Yeah, um, I think uh, the council were trying to force them, give, for them to give them some information in which some of them refuses. Like first, which council members? Let's get their identities first. All the, all the first. council. You have, you have about those those four. Normally, those four guys move together. Mm. Zakaria, Bab, uh, uh, Bienjai, Babu Karinjai, uh, Lama, Rana, Bari. There is the other council members, Suso, Churo. Uh, tell us the full names, please. Sometimes uh, I may not. Suso, know, the, Suso, what was his first name? You know, Suso, I cannot remember. You know, in the army we are used to so names. What was his rank? No, they are all we're private. Would Alfuseni ring a bell? Alfuseni, yeah. Alfuseni Suso. Yes, you mentioned Churo. Yes. What was his first name? Or full name, for that matter? No, uh, he's uh, Ture. I, no, I cannot remember his name. Could it be Mustafa? Mustafa. I'm not used to his name. Okay, it is Ture, old alias Churo. Wow, Churo. Okay, who else? And uh, you have uh, Zakaria Dabo, and uh, the drivers. Uh, let's let's talk about the security for Edward Singate. For no, instance. I cannot tell you all the security for Edward Singate. You could not. I cannot remember them. Okay. Uh, how about Yankuba? Ne today? Neither Yankuba and Sad Sadi. But could you recall but the 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 oddly for Yankuba Ture who was present on this occasion? Yeah, few few of them I can recall them. Can you please tell us? This is what I'm telling you. These are the names that I'm telling. Few of them I can recall. Okay. But you know, I think Marong Marong for Yankuba Ture, Marong something. These are the people you could remember. I can't remember, better. yes. All right? Yes. So tell us uh, how this event occurred with the, uh, with the um, political detainees. Tell us what happened from the time you arrived. Um, the time we arrived, when they brought them out, they were asked to stand in a queue, in a, in a line, sort of. And uh, they had some push and pull because I think they were asking them some questions in which... Uh, who was asking who Sa questions? Sana Singade and the others, the council members. Good. And who were they asking? The political detainees. Which of the political I can, I can detainees? I can recall OJ. Omar Jalo. I think Kama Baji. I don't know where Kama Baji. Baji. I can only re think recall those two, but they are more than two. They are more than that. Up These to are ten? the names that I can I can think recall. Up to ten? Were they up to ten? No, I don't think they are up to ten. I think about six or seven or so, but I don't I don't think they are up to ten. Okay. So what questions were they being asked? Uh, no, I cannot recall the question. I cannot recall the questions. How did, did you recall how OJ and others reacted? 
Yes. Tell us. When uh, uh, Sana said, make sure they crawl, others accepted. But I know of OJ. OJ said no. OJ say no. A force was about to use on him. I personally, I personally, who is speaking here, went to OJ, pushed OJ off from the lot with him. I told him silently, please accept what they are telling you. Otherwise, it's not going to be good because they will just maltreat you. Accept what they tell you. Because I didn't want to say it openly so that they will hear. OJ can testify that. OJ knew me well before this. And so what happened? Did anything happen? He, as a he result accepted of what and then tried to do some crawling a little bit and then, you know, things were over. Was OJ beaten at all? At that juncture. Except maybe my pushing that I can recall, maybe it is what he will take as beating. He might be beaten. Answer the question, Mr. Witness. Did he you might beat be beaten. OJ? I am not aware of him beating at that day, the day I am telling you. Did you personally beat OJ? No. I said I push OJ so, so purposely how? to talk to him so secretly. How? So how do you think O.J. would misinterpret your pushing of him aside as being beaten? No, he, he might at that juncture misinterpret it in a different way. But O.J. knows me. And even we, if... We are not talking about whether O.J. knows you or not. Answer the question. The question is, why would O.J. misinterpret you pushing him aside as you beating, beating him? How could he possibly misinterpret that? I don't know. So why are you suggesting that maybe he misinterpreted it? That's uh, that's the way because you are you are you are telling me that okay, he is uh, beaten. Okay, OJ testified before this commission. Yes. And OJ said he was be taken to the center of the crowd and beaten by the orderlies and the security personnel of the junta. What do you say to Was that? it, could, could it be the, the, the one that you are referring at mile two or no, or, or what? At mile two, yes. That, then I cannot say anything about that. Is it, Mr. Witness, that you are trying desperately to avoid seeing anybody being beaten at all by the orderlies? Not all actions. Because from what you have testified, we have dealt with about eight instances or nine instances of people being beaten or malhandled. You accepted only once that you participated in the torture. All the others you denied as not seeing. I don't know, I did not see it. Are you hiding behind? I don't know. Or are you hiding behind? I don't see it. I am not hiding. I am telling you the truth. Well, O.J. said he was beaten. You are here denying that. Fine, but I am not hiding. But you are denying what O.J. said. I am are you suggesting, am... listen, Mr. Mm -hmm. Witness, yes. are you suggesting that O.J. was lying? No. Then who is lying? But I am you telling you that o. J. I didn't see I did this to O.J., but I didn't no, see. I that. did not suggest that you beat OJ. I am saying OJ testified here and said that he was beaten. He was the only one taken to the middle of the crowd and beaten. Do you deny that fact? I haven't seen it. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's uh, five minutes past four. Uh, we are just scratching the surface with this witness. Obviously, we would need him for much of the day tomorrow, if not the entire day. So perhaps uh, we can end it here, and he would come back tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, um,
one day if the commissioners can wait uh, uh, towards the end of his uh, testimony and ask him a question, see if they have any. No, if not... Me, I think if there, are, if there is even three minutes, I have something to ask. Commissioner Kinte, you have the floor. Um, hello, uh, Commissioner Kinte. Mendy, I remember in your testimony you said that, uh, immediately after you conquered uh, or taken over the State House, you went home, and because Banjulin Police was close to you, you posted yourself there for three days. You later said from there, you went and posted yourself at the GPMB premises. That also, you said, took about five days or one week or so. Bringing everything together, you were absent for 10 days before you were, you were finally uh, caught, as you said, and assigned to work with Sana. I, is that correct? And I uh, hope that's not in contradiction to your participation in, in the um, Mile 7 event. Uh, Commissioner Kinte, I didn't understand what you refer to as absent. Uh, uh, hello, I, I said you, you said you went to Banjulunding immediately, just you spent only four hours or so at State House and you went to Banjulunding. Can you repeat it again? You said you stayed in Banjulunding, which was more convenient, closer to you, at least three days or so. After, after State House, am I right? You are right, yes. And you said you posted, you came and posted yourself to GPMB premises for almost a week. Am I right? You are right. Before you were caught up, you were caught. You are right. By Sana and uh, Baji. Yes. These days together give us between 10 and 12 days. Yes. That you were not interacting with the Junta directly. You were independent on your own, on self-assignment. You are right. I was not directly interact with uh, the junta by then. Mm -hmm. Fine. My question here is, hope um, your participation in um, mile two is not within this bracket. That's, that's my question. No, it was not within this bracket. Thank you. And uh, the two days that I had in uh, mile two was not uh, before my joining to Sana Sabali. Then it was after. Yeah, it no 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 before before joining Sana Sabali. These two these two days that I had in mile two with these senior officers, it was before joining Sana Sana Sabali. No, and you dodged once more and went back to your hiding before you were uh, detected? Yes. You voluntarily joined the Kupis. You overtook, you overthrew a government. And uh, at your success, you decided to disappear from the scene completely. Is that not strange? Um, to me, it's not strange because I know even if I stand there, I will not become the vice chairman, the chairman, and all the council members. Commissioner Kerr, my question is how would you describe Sana Sabale as a person? Um, Sana Sabali, as a person that I know, he, he is somebody who is honest, religious, hardworking, needs, and dedicated to his duty. 